now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, Mrs. Peel made the climb up the circular stairs of the lighthouse in record time. 362, 363, 364, 365. The door to the lamp room was open. Mrs. Peel entered so gently that the bogus Colonel Withers, who was sitting near the telescope, thought she was one of his men. Girl, it looks as though our job is finished. We've got all the information we need. We should get out. Out is the operative word. What? <laughs> Mrs. Peel seized one end of the telescope and, timing it perfectly, swung it round in an arc. The far end caught the bogus colonel under the chin. He went out without a word. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 7, the final episode of this story, in which Mother allows John Steed to take a more active part, Emma Peel solves all her difficulties, and even Watney, Watney, Watney is convinced that it's all done by mirror. The fight was on at the lighthouse. Mrs. Peel had failed to release the real Colonel Withers and Timothy Barlow, who, with Pandora Marshall, were chained to a wall in the lighthouse cellar. But she had successfully laid out the jailer, Markin, and Kettridge was sprawled out flat in the hall. Mrs. Peel then gained access to the lamp room in the tower and flattened the bogus Colonel. But she knew help had to arrive quite soon. The only help she could always rely on was lounging in a bathrobe by Mother's pool. The red telephone rang. Mother reached out for it. Mother? Mother, it's Watney. Watney, Watney, Watney. Uh, one is more than enough. What progress? Oh, none, I'm afraid. Nothing to report. Mrs. Peel is still missing. I think you'd better come home, Watney, don't you? Yes, Mother. I mean, no, Mother. That is, if there's nothing more I can do down here, Mother. I consider that you've done more than enough, Watney, unfortunately. Yes, Mother. Sorry, Mother. We're all sorry, Watney. You will be replaced. Goodbye. Recall Watney? One of life's little failures. Uh... Where are you going, Steve? To change into some clothes, find my umbrella and hat, and take a helicopter. A helicopter? You're not playing games, are you? No, I'm playing a hunch. The only clue in the reports we received from Watney was that Dr. Seligman's dying words were, it's all done by mirrors. Uh, well, yes, I, I didn't note that myself. Uh, thrown any light on it? On due reflection, exactly that. According to my map of the Karmatic Research Establishment, it's bang slap opposite a lighthouse. I think I'll drop in on them. Bye, Mother. Outside the Karmatic Research Establishment, Watney was about to climb into Mrs. Peel's car. He was a very crestfallen young man. Sparshot came over to him. Uh, <clears throat> recalled, eh? Yeah? Recalled and replaced... Another mess for Steed to clean up. Oh, well. Watney held out his hand. Sparshot was too much of a gentleman not to take it. Well, uh, goodbye. No more hmm? hearing voices, eh? I hope not. Watney got into his car and was about to start it up when a bright light flashed into the driving mirror. Watney. 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 Oh, no. Ah! In the lamp room, Mrs. Peel, the retrometer working perfectly, was trying to reach Watney for help. Watney! Oh, you silly little shopping bag. Drive like that, and how can I keep a focus on your windscreen? Watney! Watney! But down on the cliff road, Watney only heard his name echoing in the wind. He disappeared behind a clump of trees. Contact was lost at exactly the same moment that Barlow's men started to break the door down. <laughs> 
Emma Peel stared through the telescope. This looked like her last chance. She saw her car with Watney at the wheel appear from behind the trees. She focused clearly upon him and yelled. Watney! Watney, help me! It's Emma Peel! I'm in the lighthouse! Help! There was no more time. Two thugs entered the room. Mrs. Peel swung the telescope wildly and hit one of the men. The other drew a gun. Mrs. Peel engaged him. The light from the telescope spun over the landscape. Mm. Dear Miss Daisy, preparing the inevitable tray of tea in her sitting room, suddenly became aware of the light and the fight. Let's hope Mr. Guthrie will come home for tea today. Oh, no, you don't! Uh, what is it? Who's in here with me? I'll kill you. I'm honest to kill. Not this way. Oh, thieves, fire, murder. Oh, assault, exposure, arson, swindle, fraud, and petty theft. The old lady dropped her tea tray and ran off into her garden in hysterics. Up at the Car Maddock Research Centre, Major Sparshot was poring over some papers in his study when the light flashed onto a mirror. Uh, now we've got rid of that young fool from the Ministry who was always meddling things by hearing voices. I may get some results. Oh, no, you won't get results that way, my friend. Oh. Oh. Oh, I think I shall have to go home. Mrs. Peel, from her end of the proceedings, was having a very tough time, but help was near at hand, or actually, just overhead. Steed, in the helicopter, gave instructions. Put her down there, on that small grass patch above the rocks, the right of the main entrance. Think you can manage it? You'll be able to see it. Here goes. Doesn't look much going on down there. If he only knew. But the pilot managed the landing with great skill, and Steed found himself bounding up the steps to the lighthouse two at a time. In the hallway, he halted. Mrs. Peel's life and death struggle was drowned by the cries for help rising from the cellar. Steed moved swiftly but cautiously. He pushed open the half-concealed door. Oh, thank heaven, someone's heard us. Please, can you get us out of here? Are these chains, old man. We've been chained up here for days. Extraordinary procedure for a lighthouse. Caught smuggling. Oh, please, every moment is precious. Mrs. Peel may be in trouble. Ah, then I was right. Mm. Steel chains into the wall. Well, I have the very thing. <coughs> Great Scott, it works. And ah, now you, sir. Oh, right, I'm free. Next. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, hammer, I thank heavens. Right, now, before we all get deliriously happy, will you please tell me what this is all about? No, 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 thank you. Just one at a time. Quietly and carefully, and as it's always custom to have ladies first, what about you, miss? My name is Steed, John Steed. Oh, of course, Mr. Steed. Well, my name is Pandora Marshall, and this is Colonel Withers. Mm -hmm. Now, the Colonel invented a new type of telescope, the sort that could be used as sound as well as optical. <laughs> But in the lamp room in the tower, Mrs. Peel couldn't afford to take things so leisurely. She knew the strength of the man opposite her was formidable. It only needed the bogus colonel and the other thug to come round and she'd never stand a chance. So, she used all her wits to put an end to the struggle. The breathing's place. Now! She went for the door, but before she could reach the stairs... An impressive performance, but not quite impressive enough, Mrs. Peel. Barlow stood in the doorway. He held a deadly-looking gun. You must pardon me if I reserve the right not to indulge in this form of violence. I see. The really professional crook. The type that never soils his hands. Just gets those of his underlings covered with blood. Perhaps. I try my best. You at least escaped the first time... You've done a lot of damage to our organization, Mrs. Peel. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And so... Barlow raised his gun. But at that point, Watney rushed into the lamp room, throwing open the door wide. The door slammed Barlow in the back, knocking the gun from his hand. Uh, oh, oh. oh, I'm terribly sorry. Watch it! Uh, I say, watch up! Oh. Watney failed to hold Barlow as Mrs. Peel threw him forward. Watney staggered through the open doorway, swung round. The unconscious body of Barlow slumped forward. Watney grabbed at him, and in doing so, he pushed him towards the circular staircase. Oh, well thrown, Watney. I say, what have I done? Just effectively thrown the top man down the stairs. Steve will be most impressed when he gets to know about this. There are 365 stairs, Watney. He's got to tame it now. 11, 12, 13... 
Ooh, must be leap year. Come on, Watney. Let's see what the damage is. Mr. Are you all right up there? Steve! Steve? How the devil did he get here? Probably dropped out of the blue. But how did he know where to come to? Experience, Watney. Watney, Watney. Just experience. Mr. Seal, are you all right? Well, of course. I've got Watney to protect me. Relax now, Watney. You're in the big league, which means one thing. Eh? Let me do the talking. Coming down, Steed! <laughs> Later, in a helicopter. Watney, driving your car home? Hmm, that's right. Wouldn't you sooner have gone with him? Well, sooner than being here, I mean. Want an honest answer? <laughs> well, not if it'll offend my vanity. It won't. This is much nearer heaven. Well, I think we should go under close arrest together next time. Don't you, Mrs. Peel? Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omens.